Happy New Year, everybody. Mike's over here. Drink's there. Fucking breaking the... <sighs> breaking the point of framing it so the mic's out of the frame anyway. Anyways. It's the New Year. I'm gonna excuse myself from coherence. At least a little. Anyways, let's get into it. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. Butter, butter, butter. Okay, I'm not gonna fucking do the music. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. Because I actually have significantly more good stuff to say about this movie than I do bad. So, the annoying parts of this movie were pretty much all right in the beginning where I thought it was just some pandering shit um plus one gag um I'll get to the one gag later the the main issue that I had with this movie when it started was all of the fucking Sony product placement this movie wanted you to know that it was a Sony film the whole time. God damn it, I said the word film. Fuck, I hate when people say that shit about movies nowadays. Movies are not film anymore. Anyways. All the Sony product placement is everywhere. Fridge has his headphones that are Sony branded. And I want to say they're probably like... Probably like the most expensive mainstream Sony Bluetooth headphones you could get on the market right now. Because obviously they want to sell their shit. It's probably the same headphones that are in the Spider-Man Homecoming poster, which if I remember that I said this, by the time I go to edit this, I will edit that poster into the video to show you what I'm talking about. Um, the... I can never remember if it's epilogue or prologue. I think it's prologue at the start. The start of the movie is a... not flashback, but we'll say prequel to the movie because I can't think of the word um, it, it is in 1996 I believe yeah because they say it's been 20 years by the end um, spoilers um, the beginning of the movie starts in 1996 and it shows this kid playing a PS1 and he's using the original PS1 controller that doesn't even have the analog sticks Flash forward to modern day, and the main character who winds up being The Rock in Jumanji is playing a PS4. This movie wants you to remember, Sony made this shit. And then as if to add insult to... Insult to exclusion, we'll say. Uh, when they find the Jumanji console thing... A, it looks like a stupid fucking old Atari slash, like, Master System mashup. And... B, Fridge goes, what is this, some kind of old school Nintendo? Implying, like, Nintendo consoles are shitty and old and useless. Don't buy Nintendo, buy Sony. But... That, that kind of cut that shit out real quick because in Jumanji, there is no such technology. So, fuck it. Whatever. They just had to get all their shit together right at the beginning because they were never going to have a chance to advertise all their other technology later. So, fine. Whatever. Oh, and uh, the, the one that I forgot to write down that was fucking so insanely annoying... And I'm so glad that I just remembered it. Was Bethany, I think that was her name, the girl character that winds up getting played by Jack Black. Um, she's using a Sony Xperia cell phone, and she's like taking selfies, fucking annoying Instagram selfies, like the one I would post on MySpace like six, seven years ago, where I'm like taking a picture of myself fake asleep like oh would you lie with me and just forget the world ah! anyways she's taking selfies with that and it's just 
fucking immaculate lighting. It's so perfect. And it's like, the phone can do this. Buy Sony Xperia. It has the best camera. Which, at least for videographers, is probably not inaccurate because those things can do 960 FPS bursts of 0.2 seconds. And no one else can boast that kind of technology in their camera anyways. Um, Google's software is better. Samsung's camera is, in general, better. Anyways, I'm getting off track. That shit drove me insane, though, just that the phone was taking immaculate photos with no, like, elaborate lighting setups like I have with this shit right now. So, on to where I step on some toes. Insert Kung Fu Hustle clip here. Um, before talking about the new Jumanji, we gotta talk about the original Jumanji, partially because I went into the new Jumanji thinking, why the fuck would they reboot Jumanji? Jumanji was awesome. Yeah, coming out of this movie, um, two things. Jumanji, the original one, minus Robin Williams, kind of sucks. And uh, I am now going to put there in the frame, because I don't want to get in the way of my drink. I'm going to put it over there why Jumanji, the original movie, is fucking stupid, because there's a massive plot hole and I'm going to point there once again. The plot hole is once the main characters realize what the game is doing, there is no fucking reason that they shouldn't just be rolling dice. And before anyone says, well, in the board game rules, you have to roll to make sure you deal with the hazard before you can move on. Fine. Fair enough. But that's still just a matter of how many rolls you can do. So what I've done over there is I have rolled the dice 22 times, which is the average amount of rolls it would take for four players, one of them to get to the middle and be able to yell Jumanji and win the game. In the original movie, forgetting that the board game has its own rules in real life, in the original Jumanji, the only established rule, or rules, is that any every time someone moves, there's going to be a hazard, which is not the case with the board game. And any time, like, you don't have to deal with the hazard before your next roll. But they do. So however long that clip took, and I'm betting the the tense took is correct by now because I don't remember how long it took me to roll the dice 22 times um, however long that took is how long Jumanji the original movie should have been after realizing what the game is introduce the game as long as you want but once you realize oh shit there is fucking rhinos stampeding down the street and the only way that Robin Williams told us to finish the game is to just get to the end and say Jumanji. That should have been it. It should have been like two seconds. It should be like drop, 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 drop. Because it doesn't matter where the dice land either. Because the final roll in Jumanji goes at the speed of plot down the chasm and rolls and slow motion. And it looks awesome but it's stupid and it shouldn't be going that slow is only going that slow because they needed it to be slow to build up the tension before robin williams got shot to death by the hunter which didn't happen and like i said without robin williams that movie sucks shit um so with all of that sacrilege being said and everybody being like, What the fuck? How dare you? How dare you say Jumanji sucks? Fuck you. Um, with all that said, 
let's move on to the new Jumanji. The new Jumanji, I'm going to skip ahead a section because I have these out of order in which I want to actually talk about them. Um, the new Jumanji actually adheres to its own rules. And going back to the original, with that giant plot hole, the new one has no such plot hole. Because the new one is a video game. And it's even established that this is a video game with levels. So it's like, despite being a modern day video game, like a Dark Souls or a Skyrim or something like that, it has levels. And actually, it's not a modern day video game. It's a 1996 video game. It even has goofy fucking graphics that are like mode 7 as shit when they turn on the console and it has it does have too many colors and it's too pretty when they turn it on and that's like just a minor gripe because I know what games look like but um, it it has a structure to it that is set in stone like they have to follow this which means Rolling a bunch of dice would not get you to the end any faster. So it adheres to that rule. Uh, it also adheres to each character, minus the Rock's character, actually, has their purpose. Um, Jack Black's character can read maps, and no one else can. Ruby Roundhouse seems to have 100% charisma on male, um, male targets. Kevin Hart's character is a weapons valet. I think that was his only function outside of being Kevin Hart. Um, and... Do, 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 do. Sheldon, Smolder, uh, Kevin Hart, and Ruby. No, that was it. Seaplane, uh, the guy that comes out of nowhere later. Actually, he doesn't come out of nowhere. He's the... That option doesn't work for who they're going to pick as their characters early in the movie. Um, it's foreshadowed so heavily that he's going to come up later. Anyways. Uh, seaplane can fly planes. Or aircraft in general. But he needs the others to distract the guards and provide other functions so he knows where he's going. You know. Everybody has their purpose. Including, I guess, The Rock. Because his character at one point um, has to piece together the helicopter and he is the only one with the strength to be able to do this. So I suppose he has his purpose even if his purpose is just to be the very strong meathead. Um, so that's really good. Um, I will say that it's well shot, but I'm going to give that a caveat of, I am a fucking bokeh whore. If you don't know what bokeh is, if this background is out of focus, it probably isn't because I'm very close to the background. I'm not using a crazy wide aperture. My lens is in autofocus. Um, this glass, if I move it towards the camera a bit, that should be more out of focus now because the f camera should be focusing on me. Um, the more out of focus that is, that's the bokeh. Um, but there is so much crazy out of focus background in Jumanji, and I, I'm torn between... Well, I'm not so much torn as, like, I like it when the background is wide, uh, wildly out of focus because, you know, draw attention to your subject, obviously. It's all about what you show and, almost as importantly, what you don't show. And, uh, so, I'm all about when the background is out of focus, but... If it's done for real, that's cool. Somehow, though, if it's done in CG, I actually appreciate the effect more. Because convincing CG bokeh is, like, 
just crazy to wrap my mind around. I don't know why. But, like, any animated film I watch... God damn it, I said film again. Any animated movie I watch that has crazy blown-out background... Or out-of-focus backgrounds. Blown-out is a different term. Um, I don't know. It just is cool to me. So... Bu -bu -bu -bu. It's well shot. Long lenses. Boca whoring. Um, it does seem like most of this movie is practical effects. Obviously, there is some CG going on, like when Jack Black gets eaten by a hippo early on, when Kevin Hart explodes from eating cake, which is the actually the only stupid weakness gag. But on the topic of weakness gags, um... We can move on to this section that I have marked, Strengths and Weakness Gags. They add depth to the Jumanji characters. Not not necessarily so much to the high school kids that are playing the Jumanji characters, but the Jumanji characters themselves have some depth added because of their weaknesses or their involuntary traits um, otherwise from their weaknesses. Such as... Kevin Hart has cake as his weakness. Now, that can just be some stupid, goofy thing, but A, cake in-game is actually a ration to improve one's health. But more importantly, B, that being his weakness could imply that his character is diabetic. Um, it doesn't add much to his character, but... It adds something. Uh, Smolder, the rock, he has this ability to... Uh, his ability, I believe, is called smoldering intensity, where the rock will just stare off into space and, like, everything goes quiet and everybody looks at him as if he's the most intense thing in the world. And it's outright stated by the character playing the rock character that it's involuntary which sets up some further lore for me specifically because i wanted to look too much into this and gain meaning that might not necessarily be there bethany the stupid like the the one that was taking the xperia play screen sh or, um selfies that's just all about the vanity not necessarily about the stuff the substance she got hot for seaplane at one point and jack black's character has an erection now there are two ways to go about this one bethany was horny for a seaplane and just got a boner because she's a guy in game whatever more interestingly though sheldon Jack Black's character's name in Jumanji is gay. And the erection is coincidental, but also involuntary, and just adds to Sheldon's character, maybe. That's how I chose to take it, because it's... I don't know, it's funnier, and it it adds to the, to the lore. I likes my lore. And then uh, I already mentioned that Ruby Roundhouse has seemingly a 100% charisma score against male targets because she has a bit where she fails fucking miserably to seduce the two guards that are needed to be distracted so Seaplane can get in, fly a craft out of there, and just get everybody to safety more or less. She fails so fucking hard for a while. And then she sort of succeeds and then just beats their asses. She can never lose against males because her subtitle is Killer of Men. So past the character stuff, we can go to Establish Rules. Um, 
it's very, very early on established that when someone dies, and actually right at the start of the movie, not even when someone dies, as soon as they spawn into the game, they're falling out of the sky. And they land, and they take no damage from the landing. But they spawn in the sky when they die. So they spawn and fall straight to the ground. So that actually gets used. Um, it gets used as a gag a couple of times where somebody will die and they'll fall and get hurt. Blah, blah, blah. It's really funny. They'll fall on somebody usually. Or fall into some object because it's funny to see somebody crash through things but the good thing is they all have three lives which i was having significant trouble keeping track of who had how many lives throughout the movie because they're not constantly showing the tattoos that they have on their arms which they all have and it's like a negroni tattoo i'm aware that some people get a 111 tattooed for um, the recipe of a Negroni. Back to fucking drinking with Nam, which will probably never happen again. The, the series, anyway. Um, <clears throat> um, so, it's really hard to keep track of how many lives each person has unless you're, like, actually keeping score. But, anyways... Some people get pushed off a cliff as a gag, but they always fall from the sky. And further into the movie, people are getting pushed off cliffs or killed by whatever, specifically so that they can use the spawn to move an object that they have on their person, person to a better location. So, for instance, the rock... At one point, to better to better his own chances at succeeding, he throws Kevin Hart out of the helicopter as bait, jumps out, grabs the gem that controls everything or that they need to finish the game. He grabs the gem, lets himself die to spawn, and then... Or no, no, no. He throws Kevin Hart to be bait, lets him die, grabs the gem, gets back in the helicopter, and then catches Kevin Hart as he's falling out of the air. It, it's using the game mechanics to their own advantage. That's fucking awesome. Like, they're, they are gaming the system of the game. And being someone who has speedrun a game ever, that's fucking amazing. Um, that's the main rule that's used to great effect in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything, and I realized that I've just hit a brick wall, but yeah, this movie's really good. I'm just gonna kind of finish up here. Uh, I thought I was gonna get tired of Kevin Hart and The Rock because I saw Central Intelligence and they I laughed a few times at that movie uh, I thought I was going to get tired of Jack Black being a prissy teenage girl with more technology than brains but I didn't it's just funny and I thought Ruby Roundhouse was just going to be nothing but eye candy but since she was played by a character like she was played as a character who had no self-confidence but happened to pick the hot girl but still had no self-confidence it was still fun to watch so yeah jubanji welcome to the jungle this is the best movie i've seen all season kind of because all the other shit i've seen all season is fucking oscar bait garbage but yeah I'll see you all next time. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm going to finish my drink.